I'm Reinhold Martin, uh, and as Lila said, I direct the history and theory sequence uh, in, the, in the architecture program, programs plural really, and I'll try to explain a bit about that, but in, in at GSAP, uh, most of what I'm going to speak about is, um, uh, is the curriculum in the MARC program, the three-year MARC program, but for those of you who may be uh, enrolled in uh, any of the other programs or any of the other, you know, like in urban design or planning or anything else around the school, uh, most of these courses are also available uh, to you. It's just that we have specific distribution requirements in the MARC, and that's just to explain to incoming students uh, and, and to current students, uh, you know, how that works and, and, and what we are offering. So, so first of all, to begin, I wanted to welcome those of you who are, I see, uh, you know, on the screen, uh, a number of returning students and, and, and a special welcome uh, to, to, the, to our incoming uh, students in this very uh, difficult and unusual year, uh, as we all know. And I'm sure there are many questions about that. I know that there have been various town halls and other forms of communication with all, with all students. Um, via the dean's office, uh, so uh, I may be able to answer some other questions that you might have uh, on, especially with respect to the history theory classes, uh, in 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 terms of the the, um, the the policies and practices that we're going to be following in the fall. Um, and uh, but equally important, uh, I I want to begin by addressing. Uh, other historical events that intersect with with the pandemic and and in particular here in New York and in the states this is uh, to, to those students who are here in the states but also for those who as as is typical at, at GSAP are coming to us from all over the world it has been and will continue to be one of the roles of uh, and, uh, in the, in the overall curricula in the school of the history theory sequences to interpret the world uh, to make sense of what's happening today uh, and to put that in perspective, uh, a historical perspective, uh, in, uh, in a particular manner. Another way of saying this is I think we see as our sort of core task in, uh, in, in these classes, uh, that of cultivating uh, collectively together amongst all of ourselves, including uh, the faculty, um, a, a kind of historical consciousness and awareness of, of the relationship between past, present, and future. Which, which is a very, uh, as you, you probably know, and we will certainly emphasize in, in the teaching that, that, that we do, um, is a complex, sometimes even contradictory uh, relationship, but certainly something that is, uh, for all of us, um, uh, a continuing challenge uh, to make sense of, and, and, and that, those, that, that, that the, every individual member of the faculty, in one way or another, works on in their own work, and, and you, know, you'll, you can, you can see that in, in, in our kind of collective publications and the other work that we do. Um, and in particular today, uh, the, uh, I want to recognize the importance uh, in, in this country, but also around the world, uh, of, the, of the protests that have arisen uh, uh, in to, to, to contest, to protest, and to, you know, in a sense, um, transform the society in the aftermath uh, of the police killing of George Floyd and uh, and many, far, far too many other uh, black uh, uh, citizens and also non-citizens in this country um, uh, in, in quite brutal and, uh, as you probably know, uh, rather uh, barbaric ways. And, and so, you know, it was once said by a very important figure, Walter Benjamin, uh, a critical theorist, German critical theorist from the Weimar era, early 20th century, that every document of civilization is also a document of barbarism. Uh, and it's in that sense that, that we look at our documents, we consider our documents, which were, for us in, in our field, and when I say field, I mean mostly architecture, but, but we can also extrapolate broadly into the built environment, into the history of urbanism, landscape, and so on. The documents are also monuments, they're sites of meaning. And, and of course, the contest over, over meaning uh, that we are witnessing in in uh, acts of, uh, of revision, literally historical revision in, in, in taking down, uh, for example, Confederate statues across this country or other offensive monuments um, uh, that, that distort uh, American history in particular ways, uh, is kind of reflects and can be thought more broadly 
uh, across the, the various um, landscapes and, and urban environments, and of course, uh, in, in, in the context of individual works uh, of art and architecture uh, that we study. So, so in that sense, these, these events that continue to unfold and in which uh, many of us participate, we all participate in one way or the other, um, are a challenge. They represent a kind of challenge to us, to all of us, to, to think and to, in a sense, rethink continually the premises uh, on which we work. And here together at, at GZEP as a faculty, we've been in the, in the midst of, of working through those premises under the, the, the more general uh, rubric or kind of theme of unlearning whiteness uh, to, to emphasize that um, this is not just a matter of, the, of, of, of recognizing and interpreting what is sometimes called the racialization of, of, of individuals, of groups, and, and, and of cultural practices, uh, and by extension, um, uh, their exclusion and mar marginalization from society. But somebody's doing that work. Uh, and that work, that work of, of exclusion, has been for, for centuries, uh, tragically, uh, the work of what we what is now called whiteness in in in, the spe in specific ways. Um, you're not necessarily going to see classes that are dedicated to this theme because that's sort of the point that that the the that the that these questions uh, and these these are very very difficult questions and and they're not exclusively um, they're not limited to the U.S. context but but here we are we are we're in New York and we're in a sense beginning there. Um, uh, these these shake up all the very foundations of how we uh, do our work and how we think, uh, and it's it's really in that kind of spirit of of rethinking foundations that that we can kind of generally think about the work of history and of what we call history in theory, uh, because all history involves conceptualization, all historical knowledge, all historical work, reading, writing, etc., involves conceptualization, the production of meaning, this, this, the, the 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 configuration of value, and so on. So, so that's the work that we hope to do together with you as we welcome you back or welcome you for the first time uh, to, uh, to GSAP. Um, in a much more, um, let's say, uh, institutional sense, uh, it is also my task to, uh, to explain to you more or less what that could mean. And, and here I'm mostly addressing uh, the incoming students and, uh, and as, a, as a kind of way of welcoming you into our uh, curriculum, I, I thought it would be, you know, just the kind of simplest thing to do would be to, to go, go to the website for a few minutes and, and, and give you a bit of a tour through the, the, the history and theory requirements of the MARC program and explain a little bit how we've conceptualized that. And with that, I'll follow with a brief um, kind of synopsis of the course offerings, uh, both required and, and elective uh, for the fall. Um, and, and uh, you know that that are kind of uh, representative of, of this uh, of this structure, and and hopefully we have about half an hour or so after that to uh, to take your questions. So I'll just go now quickly and share my screen. So here we go with Zoom uh, to the website that I think many of you probably have seen. This is the uh, the architecture program requiring degree requirements on the um, on the uh, GSAP website. Um, and it's really this line here, which says history and theory and the 18 points of history theory um, that are, uh, that I want to call your attention to first. And it's, the rest, it's, it's a basically a math problem. You, you know this, so I don't need to go into too much depth on that, but, but, but these, these requirements are incorporated in and kind of part of the larger puzzle of the three years in the MARC program that you uh, will spend with us. So in the first year, uh, this applies to both fall and spring. Uh, the the uh, principal history course, the required course for all incoming students is called Questions in Architectural History 1, which is in the fall, and Questions in Architectural History 2 uh, in the spring. And these are taught uh, as not as big lecture courses, but as kind of smaller group, smaller classes uh, run by, by, by faculty, by, by the history faculty individually, um, and, but also working together as a kind of team. Uh, and we are joined by, um, by teaching fellows who are, are PhD students who are themselves in the process of developing a teaching practice, uh, and they join us as collaborators uh, in, these, in these classes. Um, I'll explain a little bit more uh, when I get to the, to the list of, uh, of, of classes, but basically that's the first two semesters of, of first year, and then 
And then as you see, there are various distribution requirements, one, two, three, four, uh, that can be spread uh, across the remaining uh, semesters, remaining years and semesters. So here are the, the, I mean, you have this for all the classes, but the history theory ones uh, are here. Um, so here is, are the two sequential courses, the required courses, QA, QAH is how we refer to this, QAH one and two for six points. Uh, and then um, history uh, theory distribution requirements, um, for MRC students entering. See, this is a little complicated, we changed this, so I apologize for the double explanation, but those of you who are entering now, uh, this is what you should pay attention to because this is uh, in or after fall 2019. Uh, we revised this uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so um, the basic idea is, is to think both across time and space, uh, architecture is modernity. And by modernity, um, we, we mean more than just like 20th century modernisms and things like that. Uh, we, we, we are talking more uh, in, in, the, in the kind of time frame of, of four or five centuries, really. This is more, most traditionally understood uh, to begin in what's called sometimes the early modern period. Uh, in, in art history, this is referred to conventionally as the Renaissance, um, and, and then all the way up to the present. So. Uh, and uh, and around the world so so not just the kind of some kind of you know central western tradition or canon but rather a decentered um a global uh, uh tradition or traditions that mix and interact and and uh and con and, and in fact conflict uh in in many different uh cases so the way that we've 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 set this up is that every uh, mark student is required to take these four uh distribution requirements uh, one from, uh, uh, from the period, pre 1800 is sort of the chronological cutoff date. Uh, there, there's a certain degree of contingency to that. It's, 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 just, it's just a kind of convention. Uh, the way we narrate it here is this is basically when worldwide industrialization uh, began. Um, and that's uh, maybe a little bit more of a, of a grounded and, and, and inclusive way of thinking about it. Um, not necessarily that this is a history of industrialization, but even uh, like agrarian uh, uh, economies and, 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 and societies uh, are part of this history um, in, in relation to, one, to, to, to the industrial uh, capitals of Europe, for example. So, um, and, and of course, during this period after 1800 in particular, but beginning well before, you, this is the period of European colonization. Um, so, uh, so the anyway, so 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 each each student is required to take one course, at least one elective course that that concentrates principally, not exclusively, but principally, and they're labeled accordingly uh, pre eighteen hundred, and then in either uh, the, the, of two geographical coordinates that we we use to describe this, uh, the north, the global north, or or and or west. These are again very conventional categories that we've just used. Uh, to mark uh, what are often rather unconventional ways of interpreting them in the cor actual courses, um, and northwest or southeast. I mean, you can think about it as global north, global south. The, 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 each category has its own problems, and, and we're not suggesting that these are authoritative. These are just ways of, of in a sense, uh, giving some coordinates to, uh, to the to concentration and focus of each class. Um, and so, so the pre-1800 can be either Northwest or, or Southeast or both in some cases. Post-1800, uh, then you have to take one of each basically after 1800, one that's concentrated in the North or the West and the other that concentrates in the South or the East. Um, and then there's an open elective in which you can take uh, any of, uh, of the above. Um, and, and it says here, you, you're expected to come on breath. It's kind of like you can curate your own your own path through this, but uh, ideally it would combine breadth in, in areas that you haven't studied uh, with some depth in, in, uh, in one of these categories. That's a way to think about, about the open electives and any, any other electives you might choose to take. Um, they, there are opportunities to waive requirements, but I will say right away that we do not waive the QAH one and two classes, the history, introductory history classes. That's a common experience. It's a core, uh, it's kind of like the Columbia core in, in some ways, the college, the Columbia College core, that, that this is a common experience for all incoming students. And then, uh, you know, people who've had substantial uh, architectural uh, history in their previous and undergraduate at an at a advanced level 
uh, can apply to uh, wave one of the distribution requirements. I won't go into the, um, the, the previous version, you can see it here, but this is basically what, it, what the requirements were. Um, and you, you can therefore see how we've uh, revised things. So, okay, so now I'm gonna uh, switch screens and I'm going to some of the courses and then I can take your questions. Okay, I'm gonna stop this share and share screen. There we go. Now this is, these are the courses that are, that are currently listed for, uh, for the fall. Now I should, I should preface this by saying we are really uh, in the process of, of, of finalizing and confirming all of this, uh, which has to do, of course, with the, with the mode of teaching that, that you have heard about via President, President Bollinger's emails and through communication with Dean Andraus. Um, but, uh, and where you know, we as a faculty are, 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 are shaping our teaching accordingly. So this is where things are at right now. You will be registering or re-registering for classes in very early September. I believe it's September 1st and 2nd. Uh, so uh, by that point, this, these courses will all be uh, documented more fully online and, and the, the process should be pretty straightforward of, of learning more detail about what they're about uh, and, um, and then uh, making your decisions. The, um, currently, uh, there, there's some information online, it's, that's kind of why I'm saying this, and, and, uh, and some will uh, be to come. So you won't find all of this online quite yet. So, okay, the first year uh, QAH uh, course will be uh, taught by uh, Lucia Ale, myself, and Mabel Wilson, Questions in Architectural History 1. Uh, and as I said, we teach those in, in individual sections. Uh, each section is a little bit different. The, we share a syllabus, but we interpret that syllabus somewhat differently. So there's slightly different readings uh, in, each, in each section, uh, but, but very, very highly and tightly uh, coordinated. Um, and and it's, it's in that course to begin with, but, but this, this project of unlearning whiteness and of, of, of thinking uh, race and society uh, through architecture and urbanism in, in and throughout uh, the, the curriculum is begun, uh, you could say, here. Um, and, and, and you know, each of us will begin it uh, slightly differently, but, but you can expect that, uh, that, that this, this question, among many others, uh, will be uh, will be a very important one. Another quite quite related and uh, kind of profoundly related, but 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 also somewhat distinct uh, question that in particular in the 19th century I should have said that that the QAH1 deals principally with the 19th century, the long 19th century, say late 18th century into the around the early 20th, and and QAH2, the second one in the spring, deals mostly with the 20th century, from you know more or less the late 18th late 19th century up to around the present. Um, and so if you, if you think back and you, you begin, uh, you know, kind of shaping historical consciousness, not trying to understand these, these, these difficult questions that are posed through architecture to us as, as, as subjects of history, as people, as people who participate in and make history together, together. We don't do this individually in any uh, sort of meaningful way. I think we, we do this together. Um, that, uh, that, that, of course, uh, the, uh, the question of, of slavery in the United States and also of European colonialism uh, in, in, in South Asia, in, uh, later in, in Africa and, uh, and in, in East Asia uh, are, are really central uh, concerns. And these all have an architecture, they have a discourse, and they interact with, with uh, the kind of uh, European um, canon, as, as it's sometimes described. Um, and similarly, uh, and, and we often very much learn from our students in, in these ways because we do have students coming from all over the world, the different traditions, uh, architectural and, and monumental traditions, building traditions that, that have developed over millennia all over the world inform those, those relationships and, and in a sense speak back to uh, the European colonial powers and the other forms of interaction uh, that we witness through this, through this, this long century. Um, and so, so this is a way of saying that that class is also a kind of exercise in thinking relationally, thinking about connections between here and there, this and that, uh, through specific objects, specific texts, and specific processes. Um, so I can answer any further questions about that uh, later if you like. I'll now just go quickly into, into the electives and, uh, and explain that the way this is, you have the course number, the, the faculty per, uh, member's name and title of the course, uh, and then um, the classification in the two, in the, the categorization in the two um, systems, the old one and the new one, 
So what you probably want to pay attention to is the information on the right here. The, if you're thinking about how this is going to satisfy particular distribution requirements. Um, so in the beginning, we had to hear two classes from my colleague, Mary McLeod, uh, one on the politics of space, which has to do with uh, particular uh, traditions um, uh, around the figures of Henri Lefebvre and Michel Foucault uh, in, in thinking about the modern city and its institutions. And, and as the title says, what happens in the modern city, what Lefebvre calls uh, everyday life. Um, and, uh, and so this is, uh, uh, we don't really classify things as history or theory, but this is the kind of class in which you would encounter a good deal of, uh, of, of cultural theory, as well as architectural theory, as well as discussions about, about city, actual cities and so on. Uh, Mary is also teaching uh, a course called Modernism in the Vernacular, 1900 to the Present. Um, this category of the vernacular was extremely important for, and it remains so in, in many cases. It's basically a modern concept, um, but uh, it, by, it, very important for, for many modernist architects like Le Corbusier and others. Uh, and, and in this uh, syllabus, she follows this concept uh, from both directions. Um, from the from the, the European and North American kind of metropole, uh, but also uh, taking a close look at at uh, architectures that that these Europeans might have considered vernacular, but other but but other traditions, particularly you know, in other words, the, the traditions of the East and the South would simply have considered modern uh, or, or or contemporary. So, so this this concept of vernacular is a contested one. Uh, next is Sandro Marquilaro's course on what is called March Metropolitan Sublimes, in which he, he takes the aesthetic category then in question. This is a kind of a philosophical con uh, concept coming from Immanuel Kant of the sublime and then the relation between the beautiful, beautiful and the sublime. This is very important for landscape history and, and treats the, the, the sort of Hudson Valley as a kind of case study. Uh, there's the Hudson Valley School of Painters and so on that, that initiate this case study in thinking the relationship between, uh, this is the title of the, of the, of the uh, course, the, of, of, of a region and a you know, rel relatively rural agrarian region, Hudson Valley, and the city, metropolitan, the metropolitan part, basically New York City. Um, Mark Wigley's course, The History of Architectural Theory, is a kind of long survey from Vitruvius to the present of of concepts in, in architectural theory uh, as they kind of develop over time and in a sense return again uh, and again. Uh, and then um, I'll skip, uh, Mark Wigley has another course uh, called Extreme Design, which is more focused at, uh, uh, in the 20th century, later 20th century on experimental uh, designs um, uh, that, that are a bit outside of the mainstream of, uh, of architectural you know, building practice and so on. Um, the um, and Mark Wasuda has a has a course called this is in you see it a four five zero three uh, on spectacular pedagogies which is is that you could you could read this as a as a prehistory of Zoom of what we're doing right now uh, Mark looks at at the kind of develop uh, development of these kind of tele uh, televisual and teletechnological um, media uh, in beginning around during the war and, and the kind of media post war period and and thinks about their, their kind of genealogy in educational practice, uh, including the, um, the, the exclusions as well as the inclusions uh, along the lines of race and class and, and gender uh, that these have entailed uh, through, through this period. Um, uh, and these are all, the ones I've just described are all post 1800, some of it North and West, uh, most North and West uh, Mary's class, the vernacular is, is a bit of both and, and we have classified it as South and East. Amy Lollyveld uh, teaches a class on China. Um, she teaches a number of classes on China. This particular one uh, is, is of early modern China, principally the Ming and Qing uh, period up to 1912. It, it is obviously straddles uh, 1800, the period 1800, but we have um, we have uh, kind of oriented, we've kind of centered it um, in the pre-1800. Uh, and, and she, uh, you know, this is a, an example of, uh, of uh, 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 an architectural tradition, uh, very, very robust and very, very complex that, um, that interacts with uh, the West, uh, Europe in particular, in a variety of ways, especially uh, in the late 18th and into the 19th century. Um, increasingly so, but, but is, is uh, uh, in and of itself 
a crucial um, tradition to understand. And so you would have the opportunity to uh, to be introduced to that to 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 this uh, tradition um, and this practice, this project, really. Um, uh, in uh, in Amy's class, Mark Katansky revisits a, 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 another kind of parallel tradition, actually. Uh, now from Europe, uh, the Renaissance, uh, early modern period, uh, but but uh, but thinks about this differently, uh, using the tool contemporary tools, uh, computers that is, and the tools of what are called the digital humanities, to to rethink basically authorship and the way in which some of these names that have come down to us, Alberti, Palladio, and so on, um, from the art historical canon centered on the European and especially Italian Renaissance uh, are in a, in a sense more like pluralities and, and in, in terms of the actual way of designing and building at that time, but also the factors and forces, including imperial and colonial or proto-colonial relationships uh, that structured cities like Venice and other important Italian uh, capitals. Um, or city states uh, during during this period, uh, so so the, hence the title recombinant Renaissance. It's it, you know kind of taking uh, really quite canonical objects, but, but 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 in a sense turning them inside out, rethinking them with new tools. Victoria Sanger's uh, course on military urbanisms uh, in the early modern era it also uh, centers. This is a little bit later than than these uh, these previous two. It centers around in the 17th century and 1600s. Uh, the so-called Baroque period um, with the French engineer Vauban, uh, who was a military engineer, who was very important as a strategist uh, in, in organizing military campaigns, and, and, and as well as, as, a, as a kind of urban planner, basically, uh, designing fortifications and individual buildings and developing building typologies. That, and this you can see as a, as, a, as a kind of history of infrastructure in a certain way, um, taken you know, much further back than, than, than typically these kind of stories are, are taken um, and of the relationship between uh, military planning and military uh, organization and the development of the modern city uh, in Europe. So next uh, would be is uh, Louis Carranza's uh, Ephemeral Architecture and Falsified Cities, Utopian Visions for Latin America. Uh, this is one of, of several uh, courses on Latin American modernism that, uh, that Carranza teaches. And um, in this case, focused on uh, the, uh, the idea, which is really a colonial idea uh, coming from, from uh, Southern Europe from, from, uh, you know, and projected onto what was called first New Spain, and then now we call Latin America, um, the, uh, a utopian ideal, a kind of the idea that this is, this is of course it was not, this was a conquest, uh, but was conceived uh, uh, by, um, by some of the uh, many of the conquerors uh, and and the the early um, Spanish and Portuguese uh, occupant or or, or um, uh, imperialists who who came to to Latin, what you know South and Latin America um, as a kind of terra nullis. This is the term that sometimes is used, uh, kind of tabula rasa or or open space on which more or less utopian fantasies and visions can be projected. This practice continued after decolonization and, uh, and the, uh, during the, the modern period. And, and it's mostly on this sort of later uh, sort of repetition of the idea of projecting a utopia onto, onto um, uh, indigenous space that, uh, that Carranza's of course focuses. Um, Richard Plunz uh, has a course uh, on what he calls Fabrics and Typologies in New York Global. Basically, this is a, a, a course in, in, in comparative urbanisms in which New York is sort of the, as global city, is the central uh, character for the first half of the semester. And, and then uh, to establish the, the sort of characteristics of this particular version of the global city paradigm. Uh, and then, of course, this is a way of, of teaching with where we are, the, you know, introducing you as students to to, to the city in which you're in. Richard is a real expert in housing in particular, but just generally in the history of New York City. Uh, and, uh, and then he, uh, he we will then compare this to various other, uh, as it were, global cities uh, around the world. Okay, getting towards the conclusion here. Um, two uh, courses by Atea Korikewala, um, both centered in the global south, uh, in South Asia principally, but not exclusively. Uh, by any means, and um, 
and uh, and and uh, in the post-war, post-45 period, the period of decolonization. In a sense, you could think about these as two aspects of uh, of this kind of colonial, post-colonial uh, transition in the middle of the century. One has to do with the uh, generally uh, northern or western concept of development, as you know, as as articulated in bodies like the UN and or and and, uh, and, and numerous other international bodies. Uh, to on in relation to architecture, modernization of cities, the development of housing, infrastructure, uh, etc., and uh, as a, as a difficult and problematic concept on in one hand, but also uh, one that has had substantial effect on the worlds in which uh, we we live and the world that we share. So so this is in, in a way history from the south, uh, and 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 if you think about it like this, you you, you might think about what it means. What it, what it might mean to, 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 to understand this, this kind of European uh, and North American um, uh, sort of canon and so on, uh, not from Europe and North America, but, but, but from, you know, let's say New Delhi or Mumbai or, or uh, Karachi. So, uh, and quite a lot of well-known modernist architects are circulating in and out of these, these channels. Uh, Atea's uh, other seminar is called Feasting and Fasting. This centers on a kind of biopolitics of food. You can think, for example, of Gandhi's salt marches this, this, and the, the role that salt plays, for example, in, uh, in anti-colonial resistance in, in, uh, in, um, in India. Uh, and, and of course, uh, and she mentions this in her description, that, that we've learned uh, all, too, uh, all too well uh, and all too um, Sadly, about what the, about the, the biopolitics of food and its kind of centrality uh, during the current pandemic, as uh, thing, as supply chains are interrupted and places like meat packing plants uh, become uh, the sites for um, for outbreaks. And so, food is not all. It's feasting and fasting, <laughs> as she says in her title. It's not all, you know, kind of carnival esque kind of uh, dinner parties, but but rather uh, also a, a really a way in which to understand uh, inequality and um, and and uh, at vast scales, at a, at a kind of global scale, uh, and and dispossession in very concrete ways. And of course, architecture has all kinds of ways in which it plays into these these processes. Okay. And now uh, in uh, in another uh, seminar, this is again on leaning a little bit more towards towards theory, uh, structuralism, the theory of structuralism as both critique and, and an object of criticism, Lucia Ale. Um, Lucia, she points out that, that, that terms like, like uh, structural change or structural racism have returned to our uh, vocabulary as, 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 as tools with which to contest the status quo. Uh, and this has this, this, this practice and this kind of vocabulary has a long history. Uh, the sort of formal philosophical discourse of structuralism is is among uh, the the key um, kind of loci for that history, and so you'll be reading if you take this class uh, from important texts in structuralist uh, theory. Uh, but but of course, architecture uh, has its own relationship to the concept of structure, uh, and it's in a sense uh, I think that interplay. Uh, uh, between societal structures and, and the way that architects and architectural theorists have considered this category that, that is the kind of focus uh, of, of this class. And then finally, my, uh, I'm offering a seminar, in addition to teaching in QAH1, uh, I'm offering a seminar uh, called Architecture, Engineering, and Political Ecology. This is basically a history of, uh, of uh, ecological conflict and, and uh, including uh, and centered around, uh, around racial uh, dispossession um, uh, on, through, through the lens of infrastructural development, basically engineering uh, with examples like the Tennessee Valley Authority and then during the New Deal era um, and uh, as, as sort of principal sites for pro political ecological uh, contestation um, in, uh, in, in the United States, but also again in, in different sites around the world. Uh, the, um, the, the role played by, or the kind of way in which we can understand uh, something that we call today racial capitalism, in other words, dispossession along the lines of race, um, uh, is, will be a central uh, focus here, as will uh, the whiteness uh, of what uh, is known as the professional managerial class. 
uh, it, which is to say architects, engineers, and other managers of the built environment, as that whiteness is produced historically uh, during this, uh, the period that we're going to cover, which runs basically from the New Deal uh, to the present. So uh, I think that's probably enough for a uh, intro to this. I will stop the share and, and yeah, we have, about, we have about 20 plus minutes and so on for questions. So to follow Lila's instructions, I will first look at the chat and uh, I don't see any. Okay, uh, so we don't have any questions yeah. yet submitted. Everyone is now able to unmute themselves. So yeah. feel free to um, just pop in with your audio to ask a question. You're also yeah. welcome to turn on your camera now so that this can be a more full discussion. And just so you know, a few of you, as you were entering, your cameras were on and I stopped the cameras so that they didn't interfere with the recording. If you're not able to turn your camera on now, you should send me a message because I can fix that for you. Okay. Uh, first, I apologize. My screen seems to have frozen. This doesn't usually happen. I'm anyway, I you can hear me, right? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, well, I may not be able to see until the sun freezes. <laughs> I may not see the speakers. I apologize. I don't know why that happened. Um, okay, so so I might rely on because I won't be able to see hands if Lila, if you don't mind, if there are okay. hands. Okay, we're still still waiting for, okay. for students to collect their thoughts. Yeah. Um, one thing, not to be provocative, but one thing sure. that I I might uh, just start the conversation with is maybe a little bit about how um, or a little bit more about how things are, are changing this semester over previous. Yeah. Um, also, there's some new faculty that have joined us that that would, yes. be, would be interesting to hear some more about. Yeah, no, that's that's a great. Um, so yes, two of the faculty uh, that I mentioned in particular, uh, Atea Korikawala and Lucia Ale, have just joined our history and, and theory uh, faculty uh, as full-time faculty members, uh, and we're thrilled uh, that that they have joined us. And and um, you know, I just gave you a little bit of a quick intro, excuse me, to their um, to their individual teaching. Uh, but as with all the faculty here, um, one of the best ways to make sense of what you're likely to encounter in a class is to is to look up the publications uh, of individual faculty. And, and both Atea and Lucia have published. Uh, widely in the areas uh, in uh, in which they work, and um, and will uh, you know, and, and this applies to all the, all the faculty. There, uh, people at different stages in 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 their kind of you know process of publishing books and so on. So you, you the best thing to do is also to look for articles, uh, as well as books or even interviews or other uh, forms of exchange about about the work that we all do. Uh, because this is, I, I, I don't want to say it in, 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 in a way that seems uh, sort of um, uh, overly, um, you know, uh, chauvinistic vis-a-vis -vis Columbia, because we, this, if anything, to your other question, uh, Lila, this is a humbling time. This is a time in which every pos in every possible sense we should be humble. Um, but, but in the spirit of a kind of institutional humility, and also personally, uh, because it's a pleasure for me to work with, with all of these colleagues. Uh, this is an extraordinary faculty, and 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 this this is some this has uh, been work that we've done over the years. I've been here quite a while, I have to say. So, um, uh, in in inviting and and uh, and assembling this this group, um, and so it, we're really thrilled. And this is really the first year, honestly, that that this new, in a sense, configuration of the faculty is going to be fully present. Um, so, so that for us, for me personally, and for all of us, this is very exciting. Um, we also, I should add, uh, share a conversation with a number of other architectural historians uh, in the art history department and at Barnard and in the program at Barnard College, our partner institution um, in, the, uh, in the undergraduate architecture uh, program at Barnard and Columbia Colleges. Uh, so, so you can look up the faculty there and um, and often in the in the events that we host or the other work that we do in an extracurricular way, as as a history theory kind of culture and group, um, these folks will be just as prominent or present as as the GSAP faculty. How are we doing on? Well, I'll also I'll read a question from okay. um, Stefan or Stephen Zimmer. Uh -huh. um, are there any specific authors or texts that you might recommend incoming MARC students, especially for the summer as we're getting ready for the fall semester? Excellent, thank you. 
uh, we're, we're, that is one of the things that we are, uh, are doing. What we have tri typically done, which it's just as a logistical limitation and we're not able to do with the QAH uh, class is, but if anybody has access to this or would like to, you know, on your own read this, there's a book called uh, The Birth of the Modern World by Christopher Bailey. It's a sort of classic in world history. And, you know, this is, goes to this point of, of trying to set the stage to think relationally and critically, comparatively across different sites and across time. It's a kind of history of the 19th century around the world, all over the world, cultural history, both mostly, um, uh, all over the world. He, he, he describes, you know, there, there are sections on religion, there are sections on economic relationships, on colonialism, on, uh, on, on urbanization, and so on, chapters on these areas. And we typically have actually required that as a textbook, basically, uh, for QAH, and, and, and asked students to buy it over the summer, and uh, and then and then to read through the through the year, um, given the circumstances that we're under right now, we have felt that that wouldn't be uh, quite right because it would people would have unequal access and we couldn't assure that everybody would be able to to get hold of this. Um, and so what we were we will uh, do um, in its place is to send, uh, you know, not right now, maybe uh, most likely in early August or so of early to mid-August, uh, some early kind of introductory readings, uh, probably will send this uh, as PDFs or something so we can make sure everybody has them um, to, uh, to uh, set the stage, you know, uh, as we go. Uh, it, but nonetheless, um, these, these kind, there's several others uh, listed on the, uh, on the QAH syllabus, which when it goes live, we, we're currently still adapting it to the, to the new circumstances, um, but that will, um, that, that reflect this kind of large world history kind of context. Um, and so, for example, there you can, you, you will learn about the history of a concept, the concept of race, uh, as it was manifest, you know, and it continues to be manifest in, in this country, but, but one that is quite different, for example, than, than the way such concepts might be manage, manifest uh, in other co uh, contexts uh, around the world. Um, so I don't know, does that Thank you. capture, does that respond to the whole question? Because <laughs> I can't see the question. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So the next know. question, yeah. and um, just so everyone sees in the chat, we've now, uh, I've uploaded the flyer for Birth of the Modern World, so you can get all the details on oh, the, great. Thanks. Um, yeah. the book. Yeah. Um, from Nick Shannon, what are some of the t tensions or debates emerging within the history and theory department, as well as the field at large? Ah, that's a great question. How do you see the relationship between research and studio practice, and yeah. how might one inform the other? Yeah. Well, well we yeah, here until tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, no, no. we could do a whole class on the first part of that question. So you all, you'll have to forgive me for being, you know, reductive, and I won't be able to speak to all the debates. One of them, though, that is quite reflected in, in especially in the QAH, uh, you know, syllabi, and also uh, in the distribution and the theme uh, of, uh, of many courses, um, is the, the, the work, the ongoing work of, of what, uh, in a, what a seemingly neutral language might be called globalizing the curriculum, a, a less neutral la language would be called decentering the European or Western or provincializing the European or Western canon. Um, and, and maybe even decolonizing the imagination. That would be the, probably the most ambitious way uh, to, to stage that. Uh, we aim for all three, uh, but we do not claim this is, you know, uh, to, the, the, to, to the recognition that humility is first and foremost called for because, uh, you know, this goes for, for, for practices and discourses as well as, in a sense, institutionalization of, of, uh, of, of, of you know, the hegemony of whiteness, uh, for example, but also of many other uh, related um, power relations uh, that, you know, the hardest work for all of us to do is work on what we take for granted, what, what, you, what goes without saying as we teach. And so in every history lecture and conference and whatever that, that you know, we might host here or that you might see somewhere, uh, you know, one way or the other, these kind of questions are going to be uh, in play. There are other more specific, you know, kind of uh, methodological questions that there's a whole plethora of, you know, uh, I, 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 I'll just summarize them by saying that the work of architectural history at this point really is interdisciplinary work. And there are different approaches to that. And, you, you, you know, you can see some of that in, in, in the, to some of these classes. You certainly see that in the different faculties' work. Uh, and, and there are different sets of objects, uh, they're, they're, you know, there's, there, 
There's history of writing that, that centers on ideas and on discourse and on text. There's other history of writing that centers on, uh, on, on buildings or cities uh, or, uh, or actors in those buildings and cities, design architects or, or, or the occupants of those spaces. Uh, and, and, and quite a lot that also mixes those, um, those approaches. So, so it's a very vibrant, it's, architectural history is a, is a small field. I like to call it a minor discipline, uh, but there are, there are certain advantages to that. And, and one of these is a certain kind of tactical and strategic leverage. Um, and that speaks to your, the other part of your question. I'm hoping I get all of this. Uh, as to the relationship, which is a classic question, we'd certainly talk about this uh, you know, a lot in, in the kind of conversational culture that, that we try to develop in the QAH sections in the classes. Uh, I should have said about QAH, it, it usually involves, everybody does this a little differently, but a kind of int introductory lecture or the presentation of material, but we, it's a two hour session each week. So we try always to make sure there's enough time in for conversation. And frequently I can speak for myself, at least in the, in the one that I teach, the section that I teach. Um, I, you know, I might ask somebody, so what are you doing in studio? Uh, and, and how does this relate? Does this, this relate? For example, the first year studios often deal with New York as, as a site. And there, there's a moment in, in, these, uh, in, the, in the syllabus in, in, in which we deal with the history of the, you know, the street grid in New York and specific aspects of New York City. And so that usually is a moment in which you know, there's a more direct uh, connection. But because the overall goal is to, to develop, nurture, cultivate, historical consciousness, a way of being historically of, you know, you, I, I mentioned that Walter Benjamin quote, I mean, there are many, many others from many, many other thinkers uh, then and now that we could, we could refer to about our relationship to history. You, but, you know, that one referred to every document of civilization as a document of barbarism. Um, that, that, you know, to see the violence in New York City streets is not always easy. And that's something that we have to, you know, to see police violence, for example. Uh, is something to train ourselves to do. And that's also part of the work. And that's not like just, you know, for the history classes, that's for everybody. That's for the tech classes and the computer classes and, and for a studio. So, so we'll, you know, we try to kind of pose these, these difficult questions and we use a lot of tools to do that, the readings, the, 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 the uh, presentations that we do and so on, and especially the, the conversation. Um, but, but it's very, very critical, really, that, that these translate back and forth across the curriculum. Uh, last part is that each uh, section, each week um, in its current form of QAH is structured according to, uh, to different tensions within that, that are thematized that week. So there's one, for example, to, to stick with this theme of the relation between race and nation which are not historically the same thing. They're clearly interconnected. This is being contested in very, very profound and violent ways in this country right now, this relationship. Uh, it's partly what we mean when we, when we say whiteness today in the US um, is, is to explain and name that relationship. Uh, and and that re these relationships are historically constructed. They're constructed you know, by things like statues and buildings and, and discourse and newspapers and, you know, and so on. So, you know, you know the, those materials are dealt with in studio, in your professional practice course, and in your history class. So it's, it's really, you know, the, the, the basic idea is to provide students with, uh, with, with, you know, not just rhetorical questions, but ways of, of posing questions, techniques even, to pose questions, to think through these questions that are transferable from a historical situation to, to a more contemporary one. Uh, and, and simultaneously to recognize that the way that the way in many ways that the present is in a sense haunted by or sh and shaped by the past again as we've witnessed so profoundly um, in, in recent weeks and, and you know I'm sure any of you all over the world wherever you may be uh, could report from your particular uh, context uh, and, and offer similar examples and this is the kind of thing that we wind up discussing in the class. Do we have uh, I don't know did I get all the Respond to all the parts there. Uh, Nick, since you've joined or you've added your, I just want to give you the opportunity to follow up if you wanted to. Um, was that? If you have one more question in the chat afterwards. Oh, okay. So uh, let's just say thank you for your, sure. for your response. Sure. Okay. Well, thank you. These are, you know, as you can see, these are kind of really interesting questions to discuss. Mm -hmm. Great. So just to let everyone know, it's 1252. We'll try to end around one. So um, I'd venture a guess that we'll take this question and maybe one more. So if yeah. you'd like to rush to fill, it, fill, fill your question into the chat, um, please feel free to do so now. Uh, this question is from Kadia uh, Tarver. 
what would you, what do you think makes the current history and theory cur curriculum successful? Mm -hmm. And what are its shortcomings? How do you see the curriculum and faculty and department progressing? Yeah, no, again, you know, great questions. I, I mean, I'll start with the shortcomings because they're, you know, in a sense, that's the easy part. Uh, the, uh, we have not succeeded fully in, in as it were, decolonizing uh, the curriculum. And, you know, you could just look at the courses. Um, and in fact, we, we have not, I would say, as a group or, or as a discipline or, or, you know, even individually concluded, and this could be understood as both a, a strength and, and a limitation, um, specifically on, on, on what that could mean or, or what uh, or, or what the priorities might be uh, in this. this. Like I said, I think in response to the first question, these, these, these issues are, are more or less constantly being debated uh, in, in our you know, kind of gatherings as historians. Um, and in print, you can, you can find this all over. Um, so, uh, so, you know, we remain bound by, uh, by our, uh, the burdens of our traditions. Uh, and, and, you know, to be quite realistic, these, these, uh, the, the, the brutality of, uh, of modern history, as, as well as its incredible um, achievements, uh, are, it cannot be undone, nor can these achievements be fully recognized and, in a sense, reproduced, you know, in 12 weeks, in one semester, or even, you know, in, in, in a small sort of experience. This is the work of lifetimes. And, and, uh, and, and each of us in our own ways have attempted to, to do this as scholars, to do this work, uh, but not in one voice. Uh, again, that could be seen as a limitation or a, a strength. Um, but I, I personally, this is one way of answering the strength question is that there's a debate actually amongst, and you can kind of if you read between the lines maybe of syllabi and of you know, the way somebody might speak about something, lectures, and you, you probably are better, students are better position to understand that the, 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 the kind of contours of these debates, because you might be going from class to class and listening to one faculty member speak about something like this, and then suddenly somebody else speaks about something in, in a different way. Um, for example, the relationship between the work of architecture, you know, capital A, architecture with an architect, uh, and these, these larger historical processes that, we, uh, that I'm referring to, that relationship is, 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 remains just as contested as ever, and we certainly have not you know, made any sort of definitive conclusions about what it, what it means to be an architect uh, or to, to learn to be an architect uh, in this place, in this time. Um, and, and so again, that, that cuts in both directions. Uh, but really, the, 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 the principal strength, I would say, and for me, this has been, like I said before, a, a, a true pr privilege, is, is this incredible, the richness and complexity of the conversation and the debate, um, which, which is not likely to end anytime soon, uh, but takes different forms as, as, it, as it develops and, and different uh, participants join. And that includes all of you, because it, we rely on all of you, uh, uh, the students in GSAP, to uh, you know, not just to listen <laughs> to, the, to these discussions, but actually to to, to intervene, and and you know the most uh, exciting moments are often when somebody raises their hand. I mean, you know, we have a new way of doing this with the with, with Zoom, but nonetheless, we can do it. Somebody and says, "No, actually, well, maybe I, I I think what if you thought about what you're saying in a different way?" They they you know somebody contests what I might say or disagrees, and brings evidence to the contrary, or or says, "What about this situation? What about that situation?" Uh, and that's, it's that capacity to, to debate. This is why it, what used to be called Architectural History 1 and 2 is now called Questions in Architectural History 1 and 2. That capacity to debate is, is I, I think, a core, a core value uh, and a core strength and, and something that we have to protect with everything that we, uh, that we can in, in, in very difficult times. Uh, so I don't know, did I? You there, Lila? Uh-oh. Lila, what happened? No, I'm here. Yeah. I'm okay, good. <laughs> I'm still, um, yes, you joined us with your, your camera. Did you have anything that you'd like to add to your question? No, I think that was it. Thanks for yes, answering. I, yeah, okay, good. Well, thanks for the question. Great. So at this point, we don't, haven't received any more questions in the chat. So we'll just give, um, you know, one last opportunity. Anyone else who'd like to join the discussion, please do so now. Um, and in the meantime, uh, Reinhold, do you have any final thoughts to share as we wrap up? Yeah. I mean, you, you know, in the spirit of, of a shared uh, conversation and even debate, I really wanted to welcome everybody again, because, you know, one of the things we've all learned in, in this, this, these difficult times is how alienating 
uh, this this way of speaking with one another can be. And and you know we'll see what the fall actually brings in terms of how we adapt to this situation. Uh, as you know, and I'm sure you've heard from many others, everybody here is working like harder, I have to say, than I've seen anybody prepare for a semester ever uh, and, and in order to, 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 to do uh, as much as we possibly can uh, to, um, to, to work with you uh, and, and to learn together, uh, to teach you for sure, uh, but also to learn together about, uh, about the work that we do together. And and so uh, you know I, I'll just I just again and again we'll just say welcome to to this to this conversation uh, uh, this this is an extraordinary uh, group of people that you'll have the opportunity to interact with and and by that I mean not just my colleagues on the faculty but also uh, the students I've been teaching here since uh, for over twenty years and I at this point have I don't know how many how you count generations but several generations of students with whom I remain in touch and it's always astonishing. To me, and just really quite, uh, you know, amazing and, and satisfying to hear uh, about what 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 people do in all kinds of different ways um, when when they leave us. So that's how it works. You know, you come for a while, and we stay, and 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 so we can see things develop and change. Um, and so we're inviting you into that into that process. Thank you again, Reinhold, for all of your work and sharing that with us. Um, I'm assuming that there's a, maybe an email address for the office or for the department, maybe something like contact information that you can share if there well, are. Well, yeah, I mean, if anybody has any specific questions, uh, is, the best is to get in touch with me directly. My email address is on the, you know, it's online. Um, I don't know, I, I don't have access, I'm sorry, Lila, to the chat because of this frozen situation, but that's okay. I'll type it you in. can put it in. I just here. wanted your permission before I- Of course, yeah, no, it's there anyway. <laughs> you know? And if anybody has any particular questions, technical or otherwise, let me just, while we're at that, say ahead of time that we will have, for anybody who wants to, to, to look to, you know, um, to place out of some of the electives, that really is for later. For this, this is, you know, for incoming students, don't worry about that right now. Um, but if there are, you know, continuing students that want to do that, we will do that sort of towards the end of the summer before the semester starts. 